Sunday evening's horrible terror attack at the Atari Waga border, which left upwards of 50 dead and over 100 injured, some say perhaps 200 injured, has forced India to face two critical questions. Is Pakistan a victim and not just a perpetrator of terror? And would it be in the wider interest of both countries to find a way of collaborating and jointly tackling this menace? My guests are the senior writer of India Today, Jyoti Malhotra, the executive director of the Institute for Conflict Management, Ajay Sahani, a senior fellow at the Vivekananda International Foundation, Shoshan Sareen, and hopefully joining us soon from Pakistan, former Army General and now a well-known strategic affairs expert, Lieutenant General Talat Masood. Jyoti Malhotra, let's start with yesterday's bomb attack at the Atari Waga border. Has the time come for India to accept that Pakistan is not just a perpetrator, but also a major victim of terror? Absolutely. I think for a while Pakistan has been both victim and perpetrator. And we know the perpetrator argument very well in India. And I think it's a, it's a legitimate argument that Pakistan has, has sort of um, fed the hand that and now this hand is sort of biting it, biting it back. But I think Sunday's incident, yesterday's incident, highlights that we need to treat Pakistan very differently. And I, the reason I say this is, 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 this is for two reasons. The first is that the humanitarian tragedy that's unfolding is so ghastly and it's coming closer and closer to us. This, this Waga border, this Waga Atari border attack, the, the, the injured were taken back to Lahore. But what if the gates were open and, and some of them had also or could have also come to Amritsar? I think we could have saved some lives. That's the first. The second is that if India wants to be the leader of South Asia, then we have to shape South Asia. And we are not going to be able to do that if we have a hands-off attitude towards Pakistan because we have to talk, not only talk, guide, instruct, cajole, okay. and work together with Pakistan to get this terrible monster of terrorism under control. Dr. Sani, I know that in contrast to Jyoti Marhotra, you don't accept that Pakistan is a victim of terror. You see it mainly as a perpetrator and the reason being that you believe that the violence they suffer from is in fact generated by themselves. Why do you not accept that, in fact, for the majority of Pakistanis, the terror they face that kills them, and kills them in thousands, is terror of the worst sort, and therefore they are like India victims? No, uh, they are victims, no doubt. But where I make the distinction is that they are not like India victims. They are victims of a problem that they, are not only, that they have not only historically created, which would still be something we can address, but a problem that they constantly renew on a day-to-day -day basis by their current policies. Now, unless Pakistan decides that it is going to abandon the instrumentality of terrorism, the fact that it is suffering from a certain quantum of blowback cannot suddenly make it a, a legitimate object of our assistance or our sympathy. We can sympathize on the humanitarian level. We can sympathize with the victims of this terrorism. Okay. But as far as the state of Pakistan is concerned, it is a terrorist state, it is a terrorist sponsoring state, and unless it abandons this instrumentality, there can be no meaningful cooperation between the principal perpetrator of terrorism and one of its principal victims. You know, before I it go... It is standing all logic on its head. Okay, I accept your point. Let me put something to Jyoti Marhotra before I go to Shushan Sri. You accept that Pakistan now needs to be viewed as a victim, as a major victim of terror. There is an argument that goes one step further. I want to ask whether you go that one step further yourself. Many people say, given that most of the principal terror we face comes from organizations like the LAT and Jaish headquartered in Pakistan, India needs to find a way of collaborating with those elements in Pakistan that are willing to collaborate to jointly tackle terror. And there are many in Pakistan, not just civil society, who want to do their bit. But there's a resistance in India to doing it. Do you think that resistance is right or do you think it needs to be overcome and we need to find ways of collaborating with those who are willing to collaborate? Well, this idea of collaborating between the Pakistani and the Indian, whether it's intelligence agencies, uh, in terms of gathering information and acting upon that information is an old idea. It's been going on for at least the last 10 or 15 years, since Kargil, if I remember right. But I think there, there, uh, Pakistan is reaching that situation where there is a lot of debate inside Pakistan as to the 
uh, where this terror has come from. And I think the people of Pakistan, and not only the people of Pakistan, but interestingly, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, as well as the opposition. So you have the political spectrum, whether it's the, the party in power, which is the, uh, the Nawaz Sharif's party in power, or the, the main opposition, which is saying that we must talk to Pakistan, and it is to India, sorry, and that India is not the enemy. Now, Ajasani's point that the Pakistani state is a terror is, is a terrorist state. I think you, I mean, you know, you can argue about whether the state is a military state and that the military has the upper hand in Pakistan. But I think we have to talk to the elected government, and in this case, the elected government is Nawaz Sharif. And I and I think that both Nawaz Sharif, especially after yesterday's attack, and Narendra Modi, our prime minister, must talk okay, about. I, I'll come to the meeting in a moment's time, but let me go back to Shan Sreen to that key point about collaborating or finding a way to collaborate with those elements in Pakistan that are sympathetic and supportive of the need to act against terror. Where do you as a security expert stand on that issue? I know many in India believe. Look, uh, I would love to know who these people that can collaborate with India are uh, and uh, how much do they call the shots. You know, you just asked Ajay a question uh, that the Pakistanis actually hate terror which kills them. Yes, they hate that terror, but they don't hate the terror which kills other people. The problem is that the, way, the person whom we call a terrorist, the Pakistanis call a philanthropist. Now, uh, I don't know how you are going to reconcile this. Uh, to my mind, it's going to be a bit of a fairy tale to think that we can actually collaborate with Pakistan on terrorism. Uh, especially since the terrorism which is flowing into India uh, is completely different from the terrorism which is biting Pakistan. Okay. Uh, if at all that is terrorism. In fact, the Pakistanis uh, very often, and this is a game they've been playing for the last al almost 10 years now, uh, they actually try and uh, break these guys into various groups, do deals with them, uh, let them operate in some areas so that they don't have to fight one group, so that they can fight some other group, then get that guy to uh, comply with or, uh, or force compellence on him. So, you know, these are the games that the Pakistanis have been playing. And I think the sooner we wake up to this reality, the better it is for us. Okay. Otherwise, if we want to live in cuckoo land, nobody can stop us from doing that. You know, Dr. Ajay Sani, both you and Mr. Sareen are deeply skeptical, not just of the idea of Pakistan as a victim rather than a perpetrator, but you're even more skeptical of the possibility or the plausibility, I should say, of collaborating and cooperating with Pakistan to jointly tackle terror. Let me put something to you. The great fear is that terror levels will rise almost exponentially after the Americans fully withdraw from Afghanistan and after the Taliban, as many expect, take control of large swathes of the south of the country. Now, the only barrier between India and that backlash from Afghanistan is Pakistan. It's the only country in between. Isn't that another good reason that we need to find ways of getting Pakistan's support in protecting us and protecting themselves? Isn't that another reason for this collaboration, cooperation, or use whatever noun you, you want? Pakistan is not a barrier, it is a catalyst. If the Taliban is going to prevail in Afghanistan, it is going to prevail in Afghanistan through Pakistani agency. Through the fullest support of the Pakistani military and state to this enterprise in Afghanistan. And if the surplus or whatever you would like to speak of in the post-US dispensation of terrorism in Afghanistan is turned towards India, it will be through Pakistani agencies again. So there is no barrier over here. As I said before, this is a catalyst. This is someone who will try to further this enterprise and has already and repeatedly made it abundantly clear that its animosity towards India is not going to be diluted and okay. this, this whole talk about talking to Pakistan. Can, can I, can welcome I, to can, Dr. Zani, like. can I stop yes, you? We've please. managed to get that line through to General Talith Masood. We were having a lot of trouble earlier, but he's with us. Let me just put a question to him before we run completely out of time. I'm sorry you're joining us so late. We've had problems trying to get through General Masood. We're talking about the possibility of India and Pakistan finding a way of collaborating and cooperating to jointly handle terror. And the great skepticism on the Indian side arises out of two facts, and I want to put those to you so you can address them. Firstly, the very slow manner in which you tackle terror cases like the 2611 case has been dragging on for six years. The judge has changed six times, the court has changed twice. Last year, the prosecutor himself was murdered. The case is going nowhere. Similarly, 
We've heard from David Headley, we've heard from the author Adrian Levy, that ISI officers like Major Iqbal and Major Ali were involved, not just in the planning, but even perhaps in the execution of 2611. And people say, even if ISI officers are indirectly involved, how do you collaborate with a country where its officials are involved at one level or another? Those are the sort of hesitations and concerns that put people off collaborating. I know you're a great believer that the two countries must collaborate on this menace that affects them both. How do you convince skeptics in India that they should heed your advice? Well, I think the question is that are you going to live in the past or you are going to live, live in the present and the future? So that's a fundamental question and are you going to change the paradigm? And I think it's applicable to both the countries. It's not just one country. So I would say that yes, Pakistan has made a lot of mistakes and so has India. So India is also not that innocent. I'm not trying to go into a blame game. What I'm saying is that I think for Pakistan uh, is uh, genuinely an existential threat and a very serious threat. A and it cannot, and uh, the irony is that people were watching, uh, you know, the, the parade, uh, this jingoistic parade, a and um, they were trying to sort of uh, be buoyed about it. But what happened was that there was such a serious internal threat. So it's a really an irony that people were uh, trying to look at that threat, uh, Indian threat, and saying that, well, look at our troops and this, that, and the other, whereas our troops should have been looking inwards. So I think it's a reminder to Pakistan, it's a reminder to India that it is so close to the border. Okay. So, G General Masood, I, 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 I I'm we, interrupting you. Yeah. Any hope of any collaboration at any level hinges critically on the two governments starting to talk, the two prime ministers starting to talk, and as you know, we've reached a bit of a deadlock over there. The view in India is that this can only break if there's a phone call from Pakistan to Mr. Modi to say, should we meet on the sidelines of the SARC summit that happens in about two or three weeks' time. Is Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif prepared to take that step to start that dialogue that is now frozen all over again? A quick answer. Well, I think he would definitely like to, but he's uh, somewhat shy of doing it because, you know, his previous sort of gestures have been really um, snubbed in a way. A and he has had to put a very small figure as a result of that. So I think if he would be assured that it would be responded positively, I'm certain that he will make a gesture. Very quickly, Jyoti, because you have your ear to the ground. If there were to be a phone call from Nawaz Sharif, and bear in mind he's once bitten, twice shy, so to take a lot of determination and courage. But if you were to make that call, what do you think the response from the Indian side would be? I think uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is here to stay for the long term. And I think Modi understands better than a lot of us that India has to take responsibility for the region. And because it must take responsibility for the region, India has to speak to the elected representatives of Pakistan. We do okay. not want the deep state in Pakistan I, I, to... In other words, I'm rushing you because we're really running out of time. You're saying if the he phone must call speak comes, to he would say yes. And say. he must begin the, the peace dialogue or any kind of dialogue must start and I think the SARC summit in Kathmandu in a couple is an of ideal opportunity. Is, a, is a good All place right, to Jyoti, start. Thank you very much for coming and thank, thank you. you for clarifying for us some of the essentials here which are obviously disputed by people like Dr. Sani and Mr. Sri. My apologies that we didn't have more of General Masood unfortunately getting that line through to Pakistan took a lot longer than we thought. But my thanks to him for joining us. I thanks also to Dr. Ajay Sani and Mr. Sri. There we end this particular episode. Next, Rajdeep Saldasai with the 9 o'clock.